All right, so um, this is Papa Bale. Welcome to the channel. I was uh, somebody brought to my attention that uh, you can trigger the slots that aren't don't have magnets in them by offsetting a trigger coil with the offset magnets if you don't have a coil that will trigger itself. Please keep up. Please keep up. So I have a MOSFET uh, on currently for a transistor. And that's that's good. That's good. That requires a little bit more voltage. That's what we're working with in the MOSFET. And that's what we're getting out of that. There's only this assembly is hooked up right now. But I was thinking about putting a trigger coil here. I mean, like right next to this trigger coil. In the offset position. And then seeing if this one will fire. I'm pretty sure it will if I can get the positioning right. That's awesome. That's awesome. I haven't got the MOSFETs to work yet. I've just been using the Darlingtons. Uh, the TIP 142s. They work really good, but they can't handle huge influx of amp like the MOSFET can. That's awesome. And that's our trigger coil voltage, the voltage that's pulsing into the MOSFET. And it needs, its typical trigger amount is 5 volts, so that's, that's good. But it keeps going up the faster it goes, so I mean, there sh should be an automatic repositioning uh, apparatus that will move the coil back as soon as it gets to an unsafe you know, melting, whatever it's going to do to screw things up, just move it back a little bit. Yeah, I, I would make one, except I don't know how. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I would make if I knew how to make it. I have, I have wild ideas sometimes. Anyway, uh, this is what we're working on right now. This is going to be the size of the bearing. ceramic bearing for the rotor and the base that I'm working on out there. This is going to be sweet, especially if I can get both of those coils to fire. That's going to be sweet. It's going to be epic because I can get 16 in there that, that can fire and just have two trigger coils. And I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, I am going to attempt to make a coil that will trigger itself within the next day or so. See, all these trigger coils, they have like tens of thousands of turns in them. That one has at least 10,000 turns. But I don't want that. I don't want a big, bulky... I want something the size of the magnet. I, I don't mind it being one coil though. I mean, it could be one coil that's this combined with this, and the hole is the one in the middle there, and fill all that up with copper. That would, that would be probably good. That would be sweet, actually. I'm going to do that. It's not just making this one longer, it's making it longer and change where the center hole is so it's like step by step it's gonna be sweet it's gonna be cool we're just waiting on some stuff and I like the MOSFETs because especially if we're gonna be triggering offset 
I mean, it's just uh, the switching rate is a lot higher, or it's supposedly a lot higher than the normal transistors, MPNs. Which is great. Of course, what I want is for one of the circuits to trigger Darlington first, and then have the MOSFETs trigger second because they need more voltage and yada yada yada. It makes sense, right? It's spinning pretty fast, and then it will spin faster when the MOSFETs kick in. Should should in theory work. But a lot of things work in theory, and then they don't work. Yeah, you know, I think it's logical to say that 98% of the theories put forth didn't pan out. Or we didn't have what we needed to make it work when we put it forth. And now we have those things and maybe the person that thought it up is dead now. And didn't write it down. You know, tragedy like that. So we're getting into organization. As you can see, there's, well, this area is always filtering in and out stuff. But it's a lot neater than it's been in the past. I just, I'm so, like, thrilled and happy about how the bearings in this rotor turned out. They are, this, this thing is literally floating on air. That's how straight the bearings are. They don't hug the shaft at all. This thing, if I say bounce, it's going to fucking bounce. Okay? See that? I'm not going to grab it up like that, but there's like literally zero friction or 0 0.00001 friction on these bearings. And it's got a magnetic lift, so it doesn't matter that it's that free flowing because it's all elevated by a magnet. Two magnets. You know how it works, right? Let me know if you don't know how magnets work. Because then, you know, I'll have to explain a little bit about what I know. Yeah, and I bumped into all that uh, torque. The idea of magnetic torque just by playing around with them. I just didn't write it down. I, and then I'm like, oh, that's what it was. The part where it's like the most strong force pushing in the direction you want to go. Yeah, that's torque. Magnetic torque. So that would be a north-north or a south-south orientation. And if you throw... A north south in there, it's got to be timed right and it's got to be switched off because if you don't switch it off, it's gonna it's gonna stop, <laughs> so it's got to pulse somehow if you're gonna throw the opposite in there and it's got to be timed right, it's got to make sense in the, <laughs> the grand scheme of things. Wow, I got so much I want to say, but here, let me uh, let me pause it. If you're still with me, I'm going to show you a few things real quick. All right, this is the base for the new rotor. For the, it's going to have a ceramic bearing in it, and we are 60% done, and we have used one k, one kilogram of filament just for that 60%. I got another spool ready to go. I knew it was going to be like that, but I want this thing to have a little bit of weight to it, and I want it to be solid. 
So I had two options. I had gyroid or I had syn syntropic. I mean, I chose syntropic. Because I was looking for the um, highest density, the lowest difference between each line. You get what I'm saying? So the higher density, this is 40% infill. Okay? 40%. Here's our rotor. Working on it. Got a 28 millimeter hole in the center for the ceramic bearing. I'm wondering if one is going to be enough. It's got to be enough for now. And it, it'll work better with just one. Uh, especially if there's any differential or disproportionate printing in the hole there. But I found that when you're working with the hole, that the, the way the grooves are, when you print it like this, work better. They work to your advantage more so when you print it flat. But you know, the only successful rotor is the one that I just showed you on the table. And that's the only one I think is really successful. That and the wooden one that I've been using for ages. And it turned out really well too. But the one that I made 3D printed and the one that's on there now is the best of the best that I have. And uh, those bearings lined up so straight. I mean, like, you can't even tell that you're putting it on when you put it on. Um, Fifty-two percent. So we're done in two days. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out. Have a great night. Bye now.